Hello, I'm Sarah Beery, and today I'll be discussing our work at the intersection of computer vision and ecology, focused on monitoring biodiversity worldwide. In the 2020 Living Planet Report, the WWF found that biodiversity is declining faster than any point in recent history. In the face of the current climate crisis and unprecedented habitat loss, we urgently need systems to monitor this decline in order to understand and hopefully mitigate it. Advances in sensor technology have allowed ecologists worldwide to collect biodiversity data at a scale not previously imagined from a diverse variety of sensor types. This data is valuable, but the volume far surpasses our human ability to process it. It can take a team of ecologists years to process a single season of data from even a small network of sensors. This is where we, as data scientists, can help contribute to the biodiversity monitoring effort by automating data processing and analysis to increase the scale and speed of ecology research. However, this real-world data exhibits challenges not often seen in traditional computer vision benchmarks. Biodiversity data is noisy. Objects of interest are partially observed, data quality can be poor, and frequently the data doesn't actually contain anything of interest. Additionally, biodiversity data has a long tail. If you look at 16 million species observations from the community science platform iNaturalist and use the rule of thumb that 100 examples of a species is sufficient to train a computer vision model to recognize it well, then we can see that only 10,000 species out of more than 100,000 total have sufficient data representation to be easily learned. Perhaps most significantly, biodiversity data is not IID. The distribution of species is heavily influenced by when, where, and how the data was collected. Let's consider one type of sensor, camera traps. These static cameras operate with a motion trigger and are most frequently used to study medium to larger terrestrial mammals. False motion triggers lead to many empty images, up to 90% of the data in some cases. Each camera has a distinctive background and a unique species distribution. As a result, computer vision models tend to memorize data from sensors they have seen during training and generalize poorly to new sensor deployments, even within the same region and same set of species. Labeling and retraining our models for every new sensor doesn't scale. We want to build models that generalize as well as possible to novel sensors without retraining. We found that class agnostic localization generalizes quite well, even to regions and species never seen during training. Together with collaborators at Microsoft AI for Earth, we have open sourced a globally robust class agnostic detection model, which works well without project specific retraining and is now widely used by ecological research groups and conservation organizations. However, generalizable species identification has still proven to be challenging, particularly for rare species or poor quality data. Humans use data from the same sensor as context to help them identify difficult cases. Here, we can see how an expert used alternate images to help identify a wildebeest that was hidden in fog. Last year, taking inspiration from human experts we collaborate with, we designed an object detection network that builds up a month-long memory bank of what has been seen at a single sensor and uses object-centric attention into this memory to take advantage of that temporal context without any additional human labeling. This attention is temporally adaptive to relevance and can incorporate context from up to a month of data at a time. In the top example, we see the module attends to repeated use of a game trail by a warthog over weeks, while in the bottom example, the most useful memories are those from the same individual grazing in front of the camera. Our method has led to large improvements over single frame and video object detection baselines. Looking forward, we hope to lever leverage similar context from alternate data streams, as different types of data provide complementary coverage both spatially and taxonomically. In our first steps before, towards automated multimodal biodiversity monitoring, we hosted a competition at CVPR last year that combined camera trap species ID with remote sensing imagery. For this year's competition, we are extending and expanding. We will provide additional environmental variables for each sensor location, and we will evaluate competitors on their ability to both identify and count animal species, moving from just identification to the data that will actually allow ecologists to look at abundance instead of just occurrence of species. I'd like to thank everyone who helped this research be possible, and I'd like to thank the CDAC for hosting the Rising Stars in Data Science Workshop. Thank you.